it is impossible to be separated from the technology in our field. Uh, there are certain things that are not technology driven, like in pre-production. There's a lot of talking that goes on. There's meetings, there's phone calls. Technology has overwhelmed film, uh, but also freed it. And, and there's a lot of exciting things that, that it have happened in, in my realm in, in cinema that are exciting. And it's also fun to work in technology. And uh, some of my colleagues would, would uh, agree with that. It's, it's fun to figure things out. It's fun to use scientific principles for creative purposes. In looking over the definition of technology the other day, I, I noticed something that was interesting. I can't quote it word for word, but it is something like using scientific applications for practical purposes. And every single version of that definition of technology had science in there. So Matt Weathers would probably really love that. But a lot of us aren't scientists, and we're artists, and we're communicators, and we're teachers. And I'm kind of a little bit concerned about letting the science part so overwhelm us that we lose the bigger picture, which is communicating effectively. I would argue that the human voice is a form of technology in a way. And it is an extremely powerful tool to communicate. I'm using my voice right now. Uh, some of the people that have impacted me most in my spiritual walk um, or in the classroom were using their voice. They weren't tweeting or posting or showing a film. The human voice is a delivery system it's like a cup that's carrying communication to our listeners and viewers. And so not all classes are going to be as dependent upon effective uses of technology as others are. For example, um, I like to model in my classes that this guy who's a lot older than them can master technology, use it, get set up, gets prepared. Uh, works at it uh, to make it seamless so that we're not waiting for me to figure out for two or three minutes why the audio isn't working or um, why the picture's so dark. Um, I go in and practice and rehearse and I uh, lecture with nobody there, which is probably really creepy, on occasion. And I flip through my, my uh, keynote presentation, my Mac keynote presentation. Before I speak many times, I want to, especially in, in a, situ a situation where I've never been, I want to go in and hear me speaking in that room and see how the images look and do adjustments if I need to, because I want the presentation to be seamless and I want it to, I, I don't want technology to get in the way of what I'm trying to communicate. One of the things that, that is sort of the undercurrent of, of today and what we're talking about is to evaluate if you're successful in communicating to your students in whatever form and whatever aspect that is. So I may need to work less on my keynote presentations and making them really great, but work more on my diction or my delivery or my eye contact uh, so that my students get the message that way too. It's a holistic type of approach, and I think we would be doing our students a disservice if we only looked at one thing, for example, technology or making better PowerPoint presentations, while losing the bigger picture of if we're communicating effectively overhaul overall. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Visit biola.edu to find out how Biola could make a difference in your life.